Good morning and welcome to Motivational Morning, the podcast that gets you going before you get going. Good morning and welcome to Motivational Mornings. My name is Ryan and as always, I'm here with my co-host Vivi. And in today's episode, we are going to discuss the book, Am I Being Too Subtle? by Sam Zell. Sam Zell is a very successful and uh, relatively well-known investor, largely known for real estate. Now, this book is an autobiography of sorts of his life and also his keys to success. So it starts off with his family, his parents who were in Poland right before World War II, but were able to successfully emigrate to the United States um, before uh, Germany and the Nazis took over. And then soon after immigrating to the United States, Sam Zell was born. And then the book also discusses about his various pieces of success and how he's able to become such a successful investor and real estate investor, um, largely by being able to identify risks and upside. And uh, we'll go more into that in more detail in a bit. I think a good place to start off, Ryan, is the fact that Sam's life firstly revolves around him making himself an 11th commandment, which is, thou shall not take myself too seriously. And I personally really like this because we can do our best, we can have a productive life and try to make change in the world, but is it really worth it to to take yourself super seriously all the time while doing so? I don't think so. And I think Sam really, really gets that point and his life focuses around that point of having fun first that's why when sam discusses the work versus fun or having a different balance between those two he doesn't see it as being something different in his opinion if he's being challenged at work if he's doing stuff he's never done before he's solving problems and puzzles in the business world and making the world a better place for him that's fun yeah, you might pass through some struggles along the way, but there's some there's not some existential definition of having fun and being jolly all the time. For Sam, that fun is struggling, solving puzzles, puzzles, becoming a better person, becoming a better company, and making the world a better place. And secondly, to add on that point, Sam really believes that if you're really good at what you do, you have the right to be who you really are. Sam gives the example of him wearing jeans to the office way back in the 70s and 80s on shows like NBC and CBS television interviews when they're asking him about real estate bubbles and investment cycles and all this jargon uh, that's relative to his workplace. And he would show up on sets wearing jeans and a t-shirt long before any tech company found it. Uh, you know, started doing these things and made it popular. But he was just being himself. And he thought that, you know, why am I wearing a full piece bodysuit when I'm doing a good job working and I'm enjoying my life, making a good contribution? Why do I have to live up to some standard that the world has created? So I really like that about Sam. Now, after all those happy-go-lucky, you know, philosophical ideologies that Sam has for his life, One of the first concrete points that I found very interesting is that he very well knows his weaknesses and strengths. He says various times through this that he's the chairman of everything and the CEO of nothing. Sam goes on to say how he knows his strengths and his leadership visionary skills and his guidance and his weaknesses also are his operations and therefore he sticks to his strengths and doubles down on every single one of those, as opposed to to dabbling in some of his weaknesses and not being as effective in it. And so I think that's a really important thing to think about is for some of you who may be in the midst of trying something new or maybe exploring a company or something yourself, is just think about what your strengths are and really double down on those as opposed to try to improve some of the weaknesses that you may be able to delegate in the future. Another point in the book that Sam talks about is reputation. And he goes as far as saying that reputation is your most important asset. Everything you do, everything you say is part of the permanent record. And I I think that's so true nowadays, especially with things such as social media, uh, anything you post. Like look at today's celebrities. There's so much backlash coming out of things they've done. And I think it's so hard to 
fake now a good reputation. You really have to you really have to walk the walk. You can't just talk the talk. And this is important because reputation goes a long way. I think first of all in business, uh, because usually in business you're going to be in a certain industry and you're going to be dealing with the same people over and over again. Um, so you want to be someone that's trustworthy and someone that people want to work with or else you'll just go to someone else, especially in today's day where there's so many other options. And then even getting referrals from good, from having a good reputation, that's so important to have for a business. And the thing with reputation is it takes years to build and seconds to take away. Another point that Sam talks about is margin of safety. So he talks about it in a business sense, but I think it's also important in a, just in life as well. So margin of safety is having low downside. So you could be wrong about something, but because the downside's so low, you don't get burned that badly. So Sam specifically in investments, he's known for looking for, for example, for real estate properties that have high upside, low downside. So what does that mean? Let's we'll give you an example for uh, maybe you're buying shares of a company. So maybe that company, maybe it's not doing so great. It's doing okay. It's selling for, let's say $5 a share. But when you look at that company, maybe that company holds in pure cash, $4 a share, that equivalent in cash. So the downside to that would be low because worst case scenario, if the company goes bankrupt, you're going to get $405 back. On the flip side, maybe the upside is, you know what? They have a new product. They're going into a new market. If this hits, it could really take off. So those are the types of investments Sam looks for. And so what he's doing here is he's looking at risk and he's managing that risk and this is what's important not only in business but I think also in life because in life we're always going to have to make certain decisions and we only have time to to go after so many things we're going to have to make choices and I think it's important that we when looking for opportunities or looking for different situations we want to evaluate what is the risk and is this risk I'm taking whatever it be whether it be low whether it be high is it worth the upside that I am going after. And when Sam thought about those two things, Ryan, especially the margin of risk, he also made it very clear that for him, winning is not binary. There's no zero sum game. He says that negotiation that leads to a winner and a loser rarely lead to a successful transaction. So rather for him, he always wanted a winner and a winner situation. Now, Sam, also made it very clear that history shows that businesses fail if they don't delegate enough, which we typically have all hear of all the time. But he also says that history shows that if business delegates too much, they also fail. Sam says this is why he believes in the radius theory of business which is having the people around you within a certain radius or a certain ability to reach them that can make decisions on the companies that you are a part of. He says you don't want to have people outside of that hypothetical radius so that you don't know who's making decisions when and how that decision is getting made. So when you have a critical point in the business, he likes having people within his radius of control that can say, hey, you delegate and you make that but not too much so that that person is delegated to somebody else and delegated to another person where you no one knows what's going on in the actual business. Now, in terms of company culture, at the core of all of Sam's companies that he's had is the company culture that they're all a meritocracy. This means that the merit of the ideas govern the future of the company. Now, if this reminds you of something, it's very similar and it is almost exactly similar to the episode we made on Ray Dalio's book, Principles. Ray Dalio is the biggest venture capital fund in the world. Ray Dalio talks about that idea of meritocracy as well, being that the idea that's best suited to take the next decision forward is the idea that's going to be taken, regardless of who says the idea. No democratic nature, no autocratic nature, so one person is making it, but a meritocracy, so someone who has the best merit is taking the idea forward. 
And so it might be another thing to consider in terms of companies now that we've seen it multiple times over and over and over again, that the actual merit should be the thing governing the future of business decisions in a company. And lastly, to end it, Sam talks about what it means to be an entrepreneur. Sam says, being an entrepreneur is not all about what you do. It is also about how you think and how you interpret the world. And then it's using that information on how you interpret the world to find new solutions for issues that are in society. Lastly, if all the above things I just said were met, entrepreneurs are mostly not afraid of trying something new. They are not afraid to put those thoughts into action to see what can happen. And to end it, Sam says that all great entrepreneurs that he has ever met throughout his entire life and throughout his business experience have all been great salesmen. Because at a certain point, when you're starting off your company, you have to be the one going door to door, telling people about your company, telling them why you're different, what your market advantage is, getting customers. And maybe that may not be you long term, but in the beginning, if you don't have that flair, that that personality in you, that desire to succeed, Sam says that it's very highly unlikely that regardless of all of those entrepreneurial qualities are met, that you're going to succeed because you just don't have that drive or hunger in you. Now, that wraps up today's episode of Motivation of Morning. If you'd like to check out Am I Being Subtle by Sam Zell, you can do so for free through our link with Audible. Check out the show notes below and go to audibletrial.com forward slash motivational mornings to get your first 30 day free trial of Audible with a free book of your choice. And then you can cancel at any point if you don't want it and not pay a cent. Hope you guys have a fantastic day.